Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Chantal Aubrey, and I'm the Business Development Manager here at Emergence. I'm pleased to be your moderator today and to welcome you to our webinar, where we'll show you how you can transform your HR department with Dynamics 365 for talent. Uh, but just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, in order to keep the flow of the presentation moving along and on schedule, the audience is on mute today. But we still Still want to keep this as interactive as possible so what we ask is that you please type in your questions in the side panel and we'll review and answer all your questions at the end of the presentation uh, now because we have quite a few people in attendance today that are new to emergence i'd like to give you a super quick overview of emergence so we are a Bermuda-based organization and we're a business solutions provider. Our primary focus and what we're probably known for the most is the implementation and support of business platforms such as Dynamics GP and Dynamics CRM. But we also have a large focus on corporate performance management, corporate reporting, business intelligence and business automation. Uh, we have a staff of 35 people including solution architects, business analysts, accountants, and functional and technical consultants. We have people who've been with the organization for 10, 15, and even 20 years, uh, but we also have a lot of new people as well at Emergence. Uh, we've hired eight people in the last year alone, and our recruitment efforts are still ongoing, so we're definitely in growth mode, uh, which is always a great place to be. Um, we have over 150 clients here in Bermuda, many of which have offices overseas, so we support many of those offices as well. Um, we have a balanced portfolio of financial services companies, distribution companies, and local and international businesses. And finally, we have, an a we have access to a large network of trusted solution partners. Um, Microsoft has a very large ecosystem of third-party vendors. So we spend a lot of time evaluating new partners to bring solutions that meet the requirements of our clients and the overall Caribbean market um, as a whole. So that's a quick overview of Emergence. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce you to our presenter today. Lisa Simpson is a Microsoft Dynamics Payroll and Human Resources Certified Professional who's worked in the soft with the software for um, several years now, since 2004. Uh, she has provided implementation and upgrade expertise, staff training, and ongoing support assistance. She's also provided software optimization and efficiency reviews for process improvement. So you're definitely in good hands today with Lisa. So without any further delay, I'm going to hand it over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Chantel. Good morning, everyone. So the focus of today is going to be on the Microsoft Dynamics 365 talent arena. This is the human resources in the cloud application. It is a Microsoft product. It's one of their newest offerings. It's fully integrated with Office 365. So all of those tools that you're getting used to using or have been using, Excel, Word, and Outlook are going to be fully integrated with this. It's using a very powerful, well, power, BI, business intelligence, to be able to get really great graphs and reports out of the data that you're going to be tracking and communicating with. It's using the Cortana intelligence, which you've seen through your Windows applications. And it's using an Azure in the cloud workspace. So along with that, we're using the Microsoft's common data services, including their power apps to create things that aren't inherent within talent already. Workflow to allow for routing and approvals and requests. And let me move forward. So when we talk about Azure, Microsoft's hosting solution in the cloud, they have data centers worldwide. You can take your choice of where you want your data to reside, but you can access it from anywhere. They're going to take care of your disaster recovery. They're going to take care of automatic backups of your information and automatic updates to your information. So you are always at the most recent and updated version of talent software. 
it uses uh, Microsoft security team, which is constantly looking out for those industry standards, constantly looking for risk assessment to make sure that your data is secure, accessible, and efficient. As it's part of the Microsoft offering and along with Office 365, you can access it from a multitude of, of, of ways. And that would include your tablets, your laptop, your phone, so that you can easily get to the information, take a look at it, update it. And from an employee perspective for what we're gonna be looking at, they can also get in and look at their own information on a timely basis. So let's talk about what talent provides for you. There's three main areas within talent. There's the attract, which is your recruiting and candidate tracking. This is where you're going to be setting up the postings, tracking all your applications and all the candidates that are out there and available for their job postings. That's where you're going to be making offers to them and scheduling interviews. And we're going to see all of this in our demos in just a little bit. As the employee moves on through the process, they move into the onboard. Well, this is where there's still a potential employee. There's still um, a candidate, but they've now accepted your offer and you're onboarding them into your company's environment. You're providing them information ahead of time and during their initial weeks, days and weeks of employment to get them fired up and to get them engaged, keep them engaged and get them moving as fast as you possibly can. From there, we go into the talent core capabilities, which is your human resources. And all of these other pieces that you see here, we can track their benefits and how much it's gonna cost them and do open enrollments. We can track compensation levels so that we can see if we have outliers and inliers and where do people fall within these different bands of compensation. We can track compliance, illness, injuries, disciplinary actions, grievances, et cetera. And then we move into the employee development and learning. What kinds of courses are we offering? Classes, certifications, skills, tests. Leave and absence, we can set up different types of leave plans with different types of accruals and eligibility rules assign them to our employees, and then the employee is going to be making a leave request on their own, which can then go through a workflow approval, so that once it's approved, it's gonna show up as an effect against their balance at the time that they take it. We also have a lot of personnel management capabilities and organization and administration, along with our employee self-service. So th that's where we're really going to be focusing on. What is going to be the view of the human resource department, the individual team managers and the teams over which they reside, and then the employee experience on their own. So let's go into our demo. And we're starting with the attract portion. Now, what I need to explain to you is you're gonna see Lisa Simpson all over. I'm in here as an applicant. I'm in here as an onboarding person, as a new hire. And I'm also in here as part of the hiring team. And some of that has to do with rules around my personal email so that I can also show you the employee or the candidate experience just a little bit. So here I am as a hiring manager. I've just gotten into a tract. I've got a home page that's going to include upcoming interviews and candidates that have been assigned to me. So if I want to look at any of these candidates, I simply click on them and it's going to show me this template of activities that we have set up and assigned to the job posting that say we need to go through the application process, a screening process where we're finding out the candidate's availability. Then we can schedule an interview 
And so if I go in here, I am now, I'm going to start over so that it would show you what it first looks like. So I can say, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> there are different people within my organization that I want to be included in the interviews. I have the choice of making it a panel or making it subsequent interviews and what's the length of those. Is it going to be via Skype or am I asking the person to actually come on site? So when I add this, it's going to give me a calendar view showing me the interviews on the particular day that I've already confirmed as being uh, an open slot with my candidate. Now, how did I do that? Here is what they would see. And here's where I submitted their schedule availability to this candidate. I asked them for two, three days. They marked it off and said, I'm available these days. So I came back in here and I put together a schedule that I can now send out to the interviewers along with a template that gives me the subject line and gives me the information that I want to send out to these different interviewing people along with a link so that they can view the profile. So I've sent that out. Now we're going back to Lisa Simpson as a candidate. And when I sent that application request, hey, we got your application. Thank you for applying. We're looking at it. We'd like you to update your own information so that you're not having to key it all in. And that's where this all came from. They put in their work experience. They put in their education. They put in their skills. And so it's a very quick and simple interface for them to be able to do that. Okay, so they're just put going into the different sections and they're able to add an experience and it's just asking for some very simple pieces of information including a description and the dates of employment and the experience level underneath the education. Again, dates and school. As I'm working through the different jobs that I have open and the candidates that I have for them, I'm going to be moving them into different stages. So I've set up the interview. I've sent out that email. It's now in, in their schedule. And so then I can say I want to advance the stage, which is going to move us into the interview stage where I can then track information coming back from the different people. And if I move them on to an offer area, it would then take them into this offer management, and we're going to take a look at it. So here again, I've put together templates. And part of the template is going to be what that letter looks like. And it's going to send it out with an Adobe electronic signature capability. I believe that they are looking to add other types of electronic signatures or bypassing an electronic signature and requiring that it be perhaps printed, signed, scanned back. So using the power of Microsoft Word and Mail Merge, I'm telling it to do some replacements in the letter that's going to be sent out using information from the candidate details and using information from the job details along with Word templates that I may already have that could have letterhead and logos and all of that other information within it.
If I look to my library, I've got these different templates that I can look at. Okay. I can add attachments to it if that's what I want to have happen. All right, so we've now sent to our applicant an offer letter. They've accepted the offer letter. So now what we want to do is tell them, hey, we, we want you to be a part of our team. And so if I come over here, this is the onboard piece of talent. So for the different people that I have coming in, I can track them each individually or group them together. I can look at what we've been doing with them. So again, it's using these email templates to send them out information. We've also, within the template, set up the different activities. So I want them to meet with certain people and it's creating a checklist for them that walks them through. So what are they gonna see? They're going to see this. Hey, we want you to come to and look at our, at our welcome guide. It's gonna give you a lot of really good information that you can start tracking your way through before and after you start working for us. So when they click on that link, this is what that applicant is actually going to see. They're going to see the different activities and they have the ability to mark them complete as they walk their way through them. We can also provide them with contact information that says, here are the people that you're going to be working with if you have any questions or if you want to set up those meetings with any of these people or, or just to let them know you're going to be getting emails from some of these people. So it might be their immediate supervisor, it might be the HR coordinator who's going to be working them through those first few days, it may be the benefits administrator, those are the contacts. And then from a st the standard of resources, there may be all kinds of resources that you want them to be supplied with to, that gets them moving. It could be an open enrollment form in the different benefits that you offer. It could be um, maybe they need to set up a laptop request and they have certain requirements or they want to ask for certain things in that area. Um, you're going to be setting up their phone or in our case, they're a new person and we're going to be sending them the Bermuda bus schedule. so they can easily get around when they first get here. So if we look at our templates, that's where all this information is coming from. So there may be other resources that we want them to have, like our employee handbook. And in our case, again, we're sending them a link that lets them know what the Bermuda holidays are for the next few years. So this would be updated appropriately. So as we are setting up the different types of jobs, those are different types of templates. The information that we send out to a manager may be different than what we are sending out to a new recruiter or talent acquisition manager or a new customer service associate. So that's where we're setting up these different types of templates and it goes along with the tasks that we are going to assign to them to handle on behalf of these new people coming in. So we have that person, they were a candidate, they accepted our offer, we've onboarded them and now they are a part of our organization. And this is where all of these different types of information can be tracked and associated with our employees and our contract workers if you want to have them also in the system. So we're very quickly going to walk through a little bit of the setup and then we're going to highlight the different area that you're going to spend the majority of your time in. 
everything starts from setting up our users. <coughs> Microsoft Dynamics 365 for talent is going to use your Active Directory. So it's making sure that it's a part of your Active Directory. Your IT department is going to be responsible for that. And then we're going to associate that with an employee record. From the standpoint of being a Microsoft product, all of our data management is coming in the ways of imports and exports. We can export all of the data. We can change it around. We can apply different pieces of information to it and then import it back in. They've given us a lot of templates. They've given us a lot of sample data. So from that standpoint, we're simply moving our way through what we want to set up. So when I click on the links area of any of these setup pieces, this is where I'm walking my way into other areas. In the case of system administration, this is where we're going to be setting up our workflow and how it's applied. This is how we're going to be setting up some of that electronic reporting, any jobs that we want to have happen. And it's also where our users are going to be assigned to roles. The roles are going to give them access only into the areas that we want them to get into. From the standpoint of our organization, this is where we're setting up those different legal entities if you have them, the companies that are involved, the departments or cost centers, the jobs, and we saw the jobs as part of our posting in the recruiting attract area, but then we have positions that go along with those job descriptions to show what's our open positions. So I may have five HR managers in a job called HR manager, but there's five open positions. So it's really a one-to-one -one relationship. We can track our business processes. This one is our HR audit. It is showing me all the tasks that need to go along with that. Think of it as a checklist. These are all the different activities that need to take place within a business process. And so all I have to do is walk my way down the list, mark that I've attended to all of it. I can assign it to different people for them to have a part in it. Compliance our injury and illness incidents and our setup. So all of these different areas, it's, it's geared toward the US OSHA 300 reporting, but for anyone who wants to track the injuries and illnesses, who needs to submit a type of report to the government or to um, an overseeing organization, you can do that. You can tell it what are the parts and pieces that you have to track and what are they called and how are they described and then these can be assigned at the employee level. Within our learning, this is where we're going to be setting up and tracking those courses and the people that are within a class or a course. Who are the instructors? Who does it apply to? And one of the nice things about this so if I go find a course, and let me bring this one up and look for the people that are within it. Of course, that's not the right one. There we go. Okay. I've got this little icon over here that says open in Microsoft Office and I have an export to Excel. And with just a couple of clicks, all the people that are enrolled in this class for this particular date are being shown, even this one, which I could take out of there. But this can become my sign-in sheet. I can forward this to the instructor to say, here's who you've got for your class. And it was just as easy as a couple of clicks.
under my employee development, what I'm tracking over here are their certifications. So now I'm looking at these different certificate types. And if I want to drill into that, I can find out more information about it, or I could actually go from the setup and look at those certificate types that I'm going to be assigning. Some of them, it may say that um, it requires a renewal. So there's an expiration date that goes along with it. I can track the employee's skills. I can set up goals and reviews that go along with performance periods. And again, I've got different templates that I'm setting up for that. So maybe one of them is this annual review. And here's where I am tracking different parts of what they do. I describe how we're going to be measuring the different areas. Okay. There could be tests that I want them to take. Compensation management. So within here, it can be very, very simple or it can be a lot more complex. But I'm basically setting up the way that I want to track and show that they are within different areas of compensation. Benefits. For all the different benefits that I want to show assigned to an employee, and I can put them in an enrollment guide so that they can make their choices. This is the medical, this is the dental, this is the pension or the 401k, this is the social insurance, any of that along with costs that would be assigned to them. They can then get an idea of what it would cost on what type of a basis, how often is it going to be assessed, And finally, our leave and absence. So from here, what I'm doing is I'm setting up our different types of plans, and I have the ability to tell it whether or not it requires an approval. So from within here, the employee can make a leave request. It can then be routed to their reports to, which would be their immediate supervisor. There can be multiple levels of approval routing. And once approved, it's going to come back and show that to the employee. Or if it's rejected, it will show that to the employee. And when those dates actually come up, they will see it. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at, in this case, a PTO exempt plan. I can also have plans that do not require approval because you're really just tracking them for some basis. And that might be your sick leave or your disability leave, maternity leave. There isn't any real approval process related to it. So when it is being recorded, either as a delegate or by the employee themselves, it is simply routing as an informational piece of inf uh, to their, their team leader or supervisor. So as I'm looking at this plan, I'm telling it that I'm accruing this on a semi-monthly basis. When does it start? On the plan start date, which would be their hire date. And it's based on months of service. So the amount of accrual is increasing as the employee has been here longer. And then I'm also telling it if there's a carryover. So I could say on an annual basis, they're only allowed to carry over one year. And that's what they would see if it would be then possibly a use it or lose it. I can see who's actually in the plan. <coughs> and this is then showing me from the employee's standpoint what's going on with them. Okay. All right. So I want to come up here to personnel management. 
So when I come in here, there are activities that are going to open up for me as a HR user, system administrator within the talent arena. And so what I would be seeing here, because it knows who I am, these are the candidates that are out there that I need to walk through the hiring process. These are the employees that are going to be coming in soon, people that we've recently hired or that are exiting. But it's also showing me the number of employees, contractors, and open positions so I can start walking my way through working with the different employees. So let me just click on, I'm going to click on myself, but then I'm also going to show you later what that view looks like when I come in as myself. So here's my general profile where I'm looking at myself as a worker. All the pieces of information that I might be tracking in terms of my address, my email, my employment information, when did I start, and here's where I can actually get to other pieces of information that I want to look at or track on this employee. So it tells me they're in the PTO exempt plan, they currently have 120 hours, they're accruing at this rate, I can look at my compensation. I can look at my competencies, which would be my skills. Any certificates, so I'm a Dynamics Credential Professional. I got that in 2015. It doesn't require a renewal, but if this were a nursing license or um, any other kind of work permit, perhaps, if I want to track that on here, um, and I call that a certificate that requires a renewal. can track my education, saying where, where did I get this from. Development, that would be my reviews. So there's an appraisal interview that needs to happen. It's supposed to be for 2019. And what is it tracking? It's tracking certain competencies and goals that we've set. And then you can track a little bit of payroll information. This is where the position comes into play. Um, <laughs> I'm in a couple of different positions right now, um, or no, I'm in one position, but I put a couple of different earnings codes on me. Now, there is no payroll within Dynamics 365 because they wanted to keep it very central and they wanted you to be able to use whatever regional payroll service works best for your environment. So for that standpoint, what they've provided is a way to integrate information out of here and over into whatever your payroll system may be. So that could be the leave and absence requests it, that gets thrown out into a batch of time if you're tracking it over there. It could be the basic setup of your employee record and their personnel number and the position that they're assigned to and the type of job and their start date and their address, demographic information that's going to go over there so that you don't have to rekey it. And then it could also include some of this information or these line items for the earnings, the payroll types that are just informational over here in HR could be coming out of payroll. So 
another tab that I have available to me is when I am a team leader. So Donna Holder is me, L. Simpson, <laughs> but she's part of the sample data and there's a lot of really good information in here, but it's also showing me the people that belong to me, but I don't get to see everybody else. I'm just looking at the people that are assigned to me and I can review perhaps what's their leave balances. Are they in a plan? Do I need to put them in a plan? Okay. If there were any pending leave requests on there. And it also shows me as I walk my way through it, how long has that person been here? These people don't have start dates on them. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if I wanted to look through all the different parts of this, I could see all the different pieces of information that I've said I want to be able to look at from a team leader, which is basically the personal information, emergency contacts, identifications, and certifications. And then finally, the self-service application. So this is where an employee would only be seeing their information and can only do certain things. So I can edit my personal details, which includes my address, my contacts, any kind of identification numbers that I might want to track. I can make changes in relation to that. And depending on how we've assigned it in the system, we can put a workflow approval that's going to send that maybe not to the supervisor, maybe it goes directly to the HR department and they're the ones that are going to see that and make note of it and make sure it's in the right format or whatever it needs to look like. So as I'm scrolling through my information, we've got an open enrollment that needs to happen and we've got a template of information that's letting them know what to expect. So we're asking them verify your personal details, give us information about your dependents and beneficiaries. So if I wanted to include my spouse or if I have a new baby that I would add to that. Then I choose from the benefits for this open enrollment period in terms of the medical who am I covering or am I waiving coverage? Dental, vision, life insurance, all of the different parts that you consider to be a benefit that they need to make choices on within this open enrollment period. This is what I'm asking them to do. And it says I'm not there, but I can save it and get out or I can actually submit it. I can look at my time off and I can make a request. So I'm telling it when do I want that to happen? And if we allow it, we can do split days. I actually want to view my balances. So I can look at where I am right now, what's my balance? as of that date, what's my balance going to be? Because I haven't actually run any kinds of accruals and this is accruing on a semi-monthly basis. But I said that I was going to be taking time off in April. So notice my balance did not go up, 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 up because it actually got reduced by a part of those time requests that I had, which was in April. tasks that might be assigned to me, courses that I am registered in, or I can take a look at all of the open courses that are available for me to sign up on. I can look at the certificates that have been assigned to me, or if I'm allowed, I can assign a new one to me. Maybe I just went through a CPR course um, over at the health department, and I want you all to know about that.
I can see when my next scheduled review is going to be and what kind it is. Now we already looked at that, so I'm not actually going to go in it. And any goals that have been assigned. I can also look at the skills that either I entered in or someone put in on my behalf. And then attachments. So there can be different kinds of attachments that have been put on here. So somebody took my picture for my badge and we're just keeping it here for safekeeping. And then something that we've been considering is perhaps for an employee self-service portal to be able to attach your pay slips coming from your payroll department system. If we can get them out there in a PDF format, probably dated, that's very secure against your employee ID so that if you come in here and you need a, a, a copy of the last three, they're right here. Go ahead, bring them up, print them out. And with that, I'm going to go back into our PowerPoint. So to summarize what we saw, and I know that was a lot of information, but we have the ability to track it all the way from the recruitment process, the candidates, in integrating with the candidates and talking to them via Outlook, asking for their information, scheduling them, onboarding them, providing them with all the documentation and meetings that they may need as they're moving into our organization or have just started with our organization. And then from there, being able to track all the relevant pieces of information about our employees and to really, really engage them and give them a place where they can find everything that we want to know about them and we want them to work with us to make them a successful employee at our organization. Cloud-based, fully integrated with Office 365. It was an originally coming out of Microsoft AX, which had a very robust platform and they just put it in the cloud. Again, your privacy and your security is of the utmost importance and they're going to be constantly monitoring for that tracking it, keeping your backups active, keeping you on the active version so that you're always at the latest and greatest and feel secure. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Chantel to continue our discussion. Great. Thank you, Lisa. That was a really great demo. Very in-depth. Thank you. Um, before we go on to questions, I just thought I'd touch a bit on what our methodology is for implementation. The first step um, that we typically do is to complete what we call a discovery. This is where we gather all your requirements by meeting with you and your key stakeholders to uh, review what your policies are so that we can document um, the model for the future state of the business processes. And we deliver that in the form of a business requirements document or a BRD. Once we get uh, sign off on that BRD, we then move into the configuration and the training stage. Um, this is also where we complete any data migration if it's required, build any interfaces to your other systems if those are needed, and all projects are carefully managed by an assigned project manager who keeps our clients up to date on the status of the tasks, of the budget, and of the timelines. Um, and then finally, uh, once we go live, we receive confirmation from the client that everything is working as it should, and we get formal sign off on that, and we then transition you over to our support group. So we have a dedicated team of support staff available to assist you with any of your support items going forward. So we don't just implement and walk away. We're there for you throughout the entire life cycle of the solution. So uh, the next question that we inevitably get um, is what is the cost? So we're gonna take a quick look at the licensing costs. So Dynamics 365 for talent is based on a subscription model. It's a pretty simple price list. Essentially your HR users, um, so those are the people who are managing your core HR functions, including the recruitment and onboarding are priced at $40 per user per month. 
each employee who then needs access to talent, for example, to submit a leave request um, would be a good example, is $8 per user per month. If there wasn't a need for the full uh, core HR functionality and you just wanted to use the modules of onboarding, for example, um, then that would just be the $8 uh, per user per month. So we can certainly dive into what your requirements are and help you to understand what your particular licensing costs would be. But like I said, it's, it's a pretty simple and straightforward uh, structure. So now we're going to go ahead and take some questions. So just as a reminder to everyone that if you haven't submitted your questions yet, to please do so by typing your questions into the box in your control panel. So Lisa, we do have a few questions here. I'm going to start with the first one. Um, First question, um, which may or may not be relevant anymore uh, because I went through the, the implementation process, was what is the implementation timeline? It really depends on what parts of talent you want to implement. We usually use a staged approach or phases. So you tell us what's the most important, and that may be the leave management, that you need to get that leave request approval process out there. and. A lot of it really depends on you. If we can get your users in, if we can get your employees in, if we can get your leave plans in and all of the balances, then you are ready to go and it's just a very short training period. If we're talking about putting in the reviews, there may be a hundred different types of reviews. So again, it has to do with the volume and it has to do with what's the most important pieces that you want to start with and how do we need to assist you in getting some of that data out there for you okay great thank you uh, the next question that we have is what kind of reporting capabilities does it have Okay, so anything that you have seen or saw me walking through you can export and you saw me do that very quickly with the um, empl uh, the employees that were in that particular training class. So if I come back over here and I go into my personnel, um, as I have all of these employees and there's some basic pieces of information around them, I can send that out to office. But you will also see, and I really kind of skipped over a little bit of this, but the analytics part that you can see in certain areas, when we're talking about learning, we're talking about goals. So if I want to expand that so you can actually see it, here are the different courses that we have. And this is a Power BI. So I also have the ability to create Power BI looking back at the data because the data is in a common data storage or service area. Perfect. Uh, the next question is, uh, does it integrate with LinkedIn? Oh, it actually does. I can't show you that because you have to have the LinkedIn recruiter license, which you get from LinkedIn. But what it would allow you to do is send those requests or do a skill search within the recruiter area of LinkedIn. And then you would send them an in mail, which is what they call their, you know, internal messaging that says, I would like to be able to access your data. LinkedIn is very secure. They protect the people's data in there. So if that person in there says, yes, go ahead, then it would come automatically over here as an applicant. Okay, great. That's a great functionality. Um, next question that we have is, is it natively integrated with Dynamics 365 for Office or does an EDI need to be developed? For Office, uh, my understanding is it's already there and that's where if we go back to any of these areas, <laughs> Wherever on the talent area you see this little icon says open an office. And so then I have the ability to export that information or get it out into Excel. You saw that all of my letters and emails or my letters and everything were coming in through Word. My emails were using Outlook. 
Yeah, that's definitely one of the incentives, the fact that it is so tightly integrated. So, yep, that was a great question. Thank you. Um, will Dynamics 365 licenses cost, will, sorry, will the Dynamics 365 for licenses cover this application? So the answer to that is no. Um, we did go over the licensing cost, so this question probably came in before that. Um, so it is uh, priced separately. Um, as we, we went through, so the $8 per user per month is the uh, the average price. Um, next question is, does it have a time management tool for employees to clock in and clock out? Um, not in here, but one of the things that we've been exploring is they're very similar to Dynamics GP. They're, um, there's a lot of other apps that people have been creating that go along with this it's part of what Microsoft calls power apps and so there is a company Foursquare that has created a timesheet system that will work along with this okay great um, and the last question that we have here is uh, does Dynamics 365 for Office um, I try to, it says Dynamics 365 for financial and operations. So I think if I'm understanding the, the question correctly is, um, does the Dynamics 365 for financial and operation, if that's covered in the Dynamics 365 uh, for office licenses, which it, it is not, it's also uh, priced separately. So um, you'll have your, uh, your, your office 365 licenses, and then there is the Dynamics 365 licenses. And under that, um, you have financials and operations, and then you have talent. And so they are priced separately. Um, so we can go through that uh, with you and understand what your needs are to make sure that um, those are, are priced accordingly. And so you understand you know, what you're getting yourself into. Um, that was the last question. Um, so I think we've covered everything um, that we needed to today. Was there anything else, Lisa, that you wanted to cover before we wrapped up? No, just to expand on what you just said, and I think maybe where that's a little bit coming from is they, um, in the 365 world, the finance and operations had an HR component. And so that HR component is what we're seeing now in talent. They've basically stripped it out of there so that those corporations that don't need all the finance would have all of the HR capabilities. And so that's where talent's coming in. But um, we would love to take you through a trial. We would love to expand more on your needs. I'm just really excited about where it's going in this arena. I mean, we've been waiting forever for something so robust and easy to use and incorporated with everything else. Perfect. Thanks for elaborating on that, Lisa. Um, okay, so um, I just want to point out to everybody before we leave that there is a talent brochure available for you to download in the handout section in the control panel. So, um, so that's there. So please go ahead and download that. Uh, and finally, let's take a quick look at the next steps. If you'd like to discuss your company's requirements in a bit more detail to see if talent would be a good fit for your organization, we can offer you a free assessment. So please contact Selena, uh, which her contact details are there, and she'll be able to assist you with that. Also, if you think others in your organization would get value from this webinar, a recorded version will be available and sent to you, so please feel free to share it with your colleagues. But we can also offer you a tailored demo that speaks specifically to your company's requirements. So if you contact Selena, she can get a better understanding of what it is that your organization is most interested in, and then we can tailor that demo specifically uh, for you. And then lastly, um, you can also have access to a free trial environment if that's of interest to you. So you can play around with it and get a bit more familiar with the functionality. And once again, Selena can help you with that if, uh, if you're interested in doing that. And then finally, a survey is going to pop up on your screen when you close the webinar today. So we please um, ask ask you to take a few seconds to answer the survey. Your feedback is really important to us. It's super helpful in making sure that we deliver the content that you want to hear about. So we thank you in advance for doing that. So once again, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and we will see you next time. Have a great day, everyone.